George from Pennsylvania says his AC works perfectly fine up until it hits about 93 degrees outside. He's wondering, is his AC broken? Is it not working right? What seems to be the problem? Because after 93 degrees, his set point temperature inside just doesn't keep up. Why is that? Meet Chris, an HVAC expert who installed his first system at just 11 years old. Since 2000, he has been running his company full time, working on everything from massive industrial facilities to high rise office buildings and thousands of high end residential projects. With over 100 Fortune 500 clients and a reputation for solving the most complex HVAC challenges alongside top engineers, Chris knows this industry inside and out. But here's the thing, he believes the residential HVAC market is the most underserved and convoluted part of the industry. That's why he created the Information for Consumer Show to bring real, honest HVAC knowledge directly to homeowners like you. No sales gimmicks, no confusion, just expert advice to help you stay comfortable and save money. And now, the Information for Customer Success Show. So we have a very, very hot and sticky day today. It's about 97, 98 degrees, 60 percent humidity, way above the normal uh, hot day of what we experience around here. So this unit here is discharging a lot of heat. It's working. From the HVAC person's point of view, this unit is working perfectly. However, inside the house, we are not getting the set point temperatures we want. But it's not the fault of this AC unit. Here's an email from George, and George, thank you very much for sending your email to questions at icshvac.com. Anybody else that has any kind of HVAC-related questions, please email them. I will pick out the best ones to make great topics and make a show about it. Here's what George writes. I enjoyed your show on filters and figured I would use this opportunity to ask questions. I live in somewhere in Pennsylvania that won't expose George too much, and my AC works perfectly fine up until it hits about 93 degrees outside or above. I start to notice that I can no longer keep the set point at 72 uh, degrees inside. Instead, it rises to as much as 75 degrees inside. My AC company tells me everything is working as it should, and this is how the AC is designed. Are they right? George, 100% they are right. Let me break it down. Let's start by explaining how every HVAC system should be designed. It should be designed using this thing called the Manual J. The Manual J is a heat load calculation. It is standard in our industry. The basic concept is that we don't size systems for the hottest or the coldest day of the year. We use what's called a design day, a temperature that represents a typical peak, not the extreme. So as an example, here in northern New Jersey, um, a lot of places are around the 91 degree day. That's the design day, 91 degrees, uh, even though we sometimes see 97 or higher. Today's a perfect day. It's supposed to be 98 degrees today here in New Jersey. Now, Chris, why don't we just design them bigger so I have more AC, right? Well, th that's not the correct answer. It's not one of these uh, very black and white things. It's a very variable thing. If we oversize systems for those once a year heat waves, your AC would be too big for the 98% of the remaining part of the year. That causes short cycling, causes humidity problems, higher bills, and shorter equipment lifespan. So what is this silly thing called the design day, right? And how do you find out what it is? So there's this organization, which is the standard in our industry. It's called ASHRAE, the American Society of Heating, Refrigeration, and Air Conditioning Engineers. And this is where we have standards for how to do things. And they publish, uh, I think it's every four years, historical temperature data for different uh, regions. And that data includes what's called a 1% uh, design day. Now, what does that mean? Well, this basically means that 99% of the time, the outer temperature is cooler than that number. It's either that number or cooler. Only 1% of the year, on the average, is going to be that temperature or warmer. So we are designing for 99% of the scenarios. We are not designing for those extreme days. So in our area, call it northern New Jersey here, Ashray lists the 1% cooling design temperature around 91 degrees. It varies on where, uh, what part of the state exactly. Um, so that's what Manual J is based on. But once we hit 96, 97, even 100 degrees, we're outside of that design spec. So what happens? Now you're going to get two um, sort of uh, types of clients that will tell you, oh, it's 100 degrees, my house is fine. Or once it hits that you know, 92, 93 mark, I notice a difference. Uh, here are two reasons why that might happen. Reason number one, you have a very well insulated house. And one of the ways you can really notice whether your house is actually insulated well or not is uh, think of a thermos, right? Uh, if you have a very good thermos and you pour hot liquid in it, 
how long does it stay hot? If you poured it into a glass that has no insulation, how long would that liquid stay hot? So is your house a glass or is it a thermos? So on a hot day, when your AC turns off, how fast does the house start to heat up? There's houses where literally once the AC turns off, you just feel the heat beaming from every direction and in five more minutes, the AC turns back on because the temperature went up already so much. So that's a poorly insulated house. And then if you have a very well insulated house, well, it could be that it could take hours for a degree to even rise uh, after your AC turned off. So is it an AC problem or is it a house problem? In situations like this, essentially it is a little bit of a house problem uh, if the gap is huge. If you're trying to maintain, let's just say 75 degrees and you're not maintaining 75 degrees, you're maintaining uh, 80 degrees, then yes, maybe your AC is struggling a little bit too much and the house is a poorly insulated house. But if you are way above your design day, and now you have, let's just say, um, 75 degrees inside and your set point was 74 and it's 100 degrees outside, right? You're doing excellent. You're doing excellent. You're only a degree above. There's nothing to worry about. And your AC, by the way, is designed to run full time. It should never shut off on days like that. If your AC is constantly turning on and off, it's way oversized. Now, another reason your house may perform a little bit better besides the insulation is also that when we do these load calculations, we don't always end up with equipment that's perfectly sized for the load calculation. The perfect example of that might be a, uh, a calculation that came out with 25,000 BTUs. Well, most equipment will fall in either into the 24,000 or so BTU category and the next step up is the 30,000. So your house may need may have needed a 25,000 BTU unit, but you ended up with 30,000 BTUs. So you got a little bit more um, than really um, the load calculation called for. So it all depends on where exactly you end up. Sometimes you have a slightly oversized system just because that is the proper size system anyway. So you never land perfectly on your load calculation a lot of times, but sometimes you may. Sometimes you may have a 23,000 BTU uh, cooling load that you need, and the proper size equipment is the 24,000 BTU piece of equipment. So you only really got that 1,000 BTU uh, extra. Uh, so, okay, Chris, so why don't you give me an air conditioning? So just when it hits 100, <laughs> I'm going to be happy here. Give me some extra BTUs. That really is not the proper way to do it. Uh, has that been done? Uh, absolutely. And has that uh, not caused problems? Yes, absolutely. However, you are asking for a scenario of causing problems. And again, for the other 99% of the year, you are not doing yourself justice. You are not running the best efficient system for the house. You are not removing humidity as well as you should. So let's look at this ASHRAE design day data here. This is pulled directly from their website and you can pretty much pick uh, any region and it will pick the closest weather stations around you that have this data. And I pulled up George's area. And yes, we can see from here by the fact that George lives in this area, that his AC is working perfectly fine. It's working as per design. So George, your design, your design day at 1% is really 80, call it 89 degrees. Your system should be designed to handle 89 degrees perfectly. Anything above that, you should expect some deficiency and of course the house to warm up. Now, if the house warms up way too much, um, you know, when it's 94, 95 degrees, way too much where it's uncomfortable, you honestly have a house problem. You should look into sealing and insulating your home. That is your best investment. It is not a bigger AC system. But to recap, on the hottest days of the year, if your AC is not performing, that is expected. That is perfectly fine. Don't fret. Don't curse out your HVAC contractors, please. <laughs> this is by design. ASHRAE is the authority on this. And think of this as if you were buying an umbrella. Uh, you don't pick one based on the worst hurricane imaginable. You get one that handles regular storms, your regular rainy day. That's how HVAC is, is designed to work as well. So again, you may have a house problem. If you're uncomfortable when it's extremely hot outside, it's not your AC. Most likely it's your house. Leave your HVAC guy alone, please. All right, good. so I know my system is sized for a certain day. I know my house is not the best. Well, what do I do? It gets hot, I want it to be comfortable. So there's a couple tips for surviving a heat wave that I can give you. So number one, you wanna have a beautiful, clean filter on your system. Even if you change it a couple weeks ago or a month ago and you think it's still clean, if you want the best ideal performing system, change your filter right before that heat wave. Your, your system's gonna perform the best with a nice, clean filter. Also, you're gonna look at your forecast. You're gonna know exactly when this heat wave starts. So don't have your system in some kind of scheduled setback program. Leave it in permanent hold. Establish a temperature and just let it be. 
Stop complaining that it's going to cost you extra. I mean, it's either your comfort or your utility bill. And trust me, it's not that much money that it's going to cost you to maintain the temperature anyway. But you want your system to maintain the temperature before the heat starts. You know, uh, the biggest problem I see a lot of times from our customers is that they'll be a heat wave day. They'll have a schedule. They'll be at work. And their house, meanwhile, allows, you know, the system set back and it allows the house to get up to like 80 degrees. They come home, they turn it down, and they expect to be comfortable. Not going to happen during the heat wave. Don't do that. Leave it at permanent hold. Next is a thing I call pre-cooling, right? So we are still in the milder temperatures. Two days from now, you see that heat wave coming. Well, leave it in permanent hold, but also put it a little bit lower than you normally like. If, let's just say your temperature that you normally keep is 72 leave it down to 70. Maybe for a day you're going to complain that it's a little too chilly. However, you established your house at being 70. So it's not just the air in your house, right? If you maintain it at 70 degrees, it's the walls, the floors, the furniture, the ceiling, everything that's got mass is going to retain that temperature. So when that heat wave hits, now you have that 70 baseline, right? You don't have that 78 because you left home. You don't have that 72. You have a 70 baseline. So you have a better chance of making it through a heat wave being a lot more comfortable. Uh, and besides that, of course, close your blinds, close your doors, close your windows, limit the amount of people coming in and out. And of course, you know, any, and if you don't have LED lights by now, you should. But if you've got light bulbs that are generating heat, turn those off. Those, those all create heat and uh, you'll make it through the heat wave.